Hey folks, Yarek here and welcome to Emberscape. It took me a while, but I managed to gather 10 more pieces of ember with insect inclusions. And this time we have some good stuff, some rare stuff, and the best one will be at the end of the video. Also, uh, I did buy a color filter for the illuminator. Before it was shining a bright yellow light, and we did fix it. I was waiting around 3 months for this piece of blue glass, but it finally arrived. When taking macro pictures of ember inclusions, it's extra important to have enough light on the specimens, especially in darker pieces. Also, I decided to film a process how to mount the color filter on the illuminator. I think it can be useful for someone. We will start making photos from this beautiful wasp. I'm not sure with naked eye, but I think it has some blue colors on the abdomen. Let's put it under microscope and check. And we will get even closer to the inclusion after a while. It's a fantastic 99 million years old wasp. Preservation is respectable. And I was looking for an identification for this booger. Turns out this wasp is from a family Bethelidae, and the species possibly are Lanceripirinae. This extinct species of wasp are known exclusively from Cretaceous amber deposits of Lebanon and Myanmar. This first wasp did not disappoint me, colors were amazing and it's not the smallest inclusion even though it looks like, but it's around uh, half centimeter in body length with curled tail. If the abdomen would be like elongated, it would be even bigger, like 7 or 8 millimeters. Either way, uh, let's take another piece and let's take one of the tiniest one of today. And this one is gonna be a cricket. Yes, it is a cricket, but it's super tiny one. It's like what? One with a half, two millimeters in body length? Yeah, it's not gonna be easy to take picture for this one with my uh, <laughs> Chinese microscope. Either way, this one is quite amusing. I think this is the mood cricket. They were digging holes, burrowing creatures. Let's put it into microscope real fast. Preservation is outstanding, but I don't see the tips of the back legs. Looks like they are missing. And yeah, this is a burrowing cricket, also known as the mole cricket. If we look closely at his front legs, we can see that they look like little shovels. Digging adaptation. This booger belongs to the genus Grillotalpa. Species as of right now is unidentified. The cricket was tiny but fantastic. Now let's take something else. Let's take a flying insect. Yeah, this one gonna be a challenge. Another very pleasant piece. I do see some of the wings and the wings have patterns but we have an issue once again. It's in the layer of amber. Can we make a picture of it? You see this? Yeah, now you can see, it's just inside the layer of amber. Yeah, the picture not gonna happen well, but it's still nice to look at with naked eye. Some sort of flying insect with nice wings. Identification will come after I will try to make picture. Even after taking pictures, I had no idea who this insect is mainly because pictures turned out not clear at all, as expected. 
but my friend in a blink of an eye identified this flying puger to be a cicada, and he pointed one characteristic, that proboscus of this specimen looks exactly like proboscus that cicadas have. Scientific name is Fulgoroidea. As expected, guys, this mean layering got in the way of taking a good picture. Either way, let's not stop, let's take something beautiful without layers for a change that will make a fantastic picture, I think. Oh man, this one is exceptional. It's a very clear piece and the uh, insect, it's the Coleoptera beetle. It looks extremely well preserved. The carapace is reflecting light, the sunlight. Oh, I see some damage on the carapace, but yeah, it's fantastic specimen in a fantastic piece. It's not the smallest also, very cool. Exceptional quality of the piece itself and the specimen as well. I even see some rainbow colors on the carapace, which is pretty cool. And I was right about the damage on the carapace. There is some cracks on it. Other than that, it looks flawless, right? Unfortunately wrong. This Coloptera beetle is missing a head. That's a boomer. Someone probably bited it off while it wasn't fully submerged in sticky raisin. As for identification, I have no clue, since it's missing its head. <laughs> Beetle was a heavy heater. This one was fantastic. And now let's they show you something that does not require macrophotography. This plant. It's a big plant. Two centimeters. This plant, on the other hand, is a metasequoia, most likely. Quite abundant in the Cretaceous period, as it looks like, because I'm finding these plants a lot, but this one is exceptional. It's like two centimeters in length. It's a, it's a big inclusion in a quite clear stone and yeah, it's nicely preserved. Even though I'm not gonna take pic uh, pictures for this one because it looks a lot better just on video. Yeah, but I think there are some boogers inside also, some flying insects all over the place. A lot of going on in this piece, truly exceptional. Next one is gonna be this, not big piece, but uh, most of the surface of this piece is the inclusion, but we have some concerns here. Now this piece is gonna be very problematic. You see how much debris it is inside. I can barely see the insect inside. It's a big beetle that was eating bark. It has these huge mandibles that were chewing <laughs> the tree bark. But, a lot of debris and the inclusion is quite dark, so I'm not sure if we will be able to make some good pictures. Either way, this is very cool inclusion. Other than the beetle itself, there are some other insects inside. You can see the flying insect near the beetle itself. Yeah, let's take some pictures. And this time around, concerns are validated. The beetle is very black. I can see that the the carapace does reflect the light, so it's like properly lighted, but even more lighted, but we can barely see it because it's dark and there is a lot of stuff going on in this piece, so that's a shame. It is what it is, turns out inclusions are a lot like people, some are photogenic and some look better in real life, like this body. In real life it looks a lot better than in the pictures. Now let's take one of the biggest inclusions with insects inside and it's a Elkanidae cricket. Now this one is a little bit bigger cr cricket. It's Elkanidae cricket. I can tell by its legs it has this metatubial spores on the legs. Unfortunately the piece itself is a big, bit dark and it's not the best preserved cricket, even though the head looks quite alright. The wings and the rest of the body looks like it's missing. The, I don't see the abdomen in there. Quite cool either way, to be honest. Good stuff. Quite poor preservation on this fella. And the piece is quite dark. But no doubts in my mind, it's a adult Elkanidae cricket. 
the whole family went extinct back in the Cretaceous period. Luckily, we still can observe them fossilized in amber. Once again, <laughs> this one looks better in real life than on the pictures, but it's not as bad as the black beetle. Either way, let's take smaller cricket. One more cricket in our hands and this one seems like it does have legs. It's nicely preserved, it's not big, like 3 millimeters, maybe more with the legs. Yeah, cool stuff. Fantastic, big eyes. And put it under microscope and inspect it. This one looks good. As tiny as it gets. It's the same species as the previous small cricket, but this one has its legs intact. And there's one more thing, the burrowing front legs are better visible too, check them out. Each insect is special in its own way, fascinating. Now let's take this one. This one is quite uncommon, it's a pseudoscorpion. It's a pseudoscorpion boys and girls and it's in fantastic position, like posing for us. And the piece is quite blurry, I can tell you right away. Yeah, we'll see how the picture turns out, but I'm not very optimistic to be honest, because now when the light reflects, we can see the shape clearly, but I can see it's in between of this blurry orange stuff that I hate so much in Burmese Ember. Still very cool and it's like one millimeter, maybe one with a half millimeter in body length. Tiniest inclusion of today. It's unfortunate, but this weird mineralization is covering our precious specimen. It's a shame really, so the scorpions are awesome inclusions and are sought after quite heavily. At least we can see its claws clearly. And by the way, so the scorpions are arachnids, not spiders, but arachnids. And finally, this is the last piece. And this one is my proudest possession of this video. And maybe one of the proudest possessions overall. Now this is the stuff I was keeping for the last one. It is a extinct cockroach from the family Umenacolidea and its species is Perspicus pilosus, very rare cockroach with elongated abdomen, extremely well preserved. This one is personal collection specimen for sure, it's amazing, wow, so, so many details. Let's hope the pictures will be even better than this video. But yeah, this tide, it was a cabochon. I risked a lot and cut this piece into flat surface so we can see the bugger better. Other side is also quite well preserved. And as expected, when you have a great specimen, you can also expect a good pictures. Lower body is preserved perfectly and they think this is a female. Notice the hole in the abdomen. I think it was about to lay an egg. Few things worth pointing out about this extinct lineage of rochoids. Look at its triangular head and bulging eyes. What comes to mind first? Personally for me, head is a close match for the praying mantises. One of the identification characteristics are these unproportionally huge eyes and triangular head for these rochoids. Front side is a bit worse in preservation, wing guard is quite transparent, but perfect ventral side makes up for it. We are finished, we got some good pictures, some bad pictures, so okay pictures, but overall I wasn't making pictures of insect inclusion for a long time, it's getting harder and harder to acquire some good stuff for not super expensive, if you know what I mean. And um, yeah, I was happy with this, my final one, the most, the Perspicus Pilosus Humanocolidea cockroach. I love them, and I made some videos about them also, the documentary-like informational videos. 
uh, it's called Alienopteridae cockroaches from the past or something like that. I don't remember. I will put a link in the description. Check it out and I hope you did enjoy this video. And thank you for watching and see you next time. Bye!